Painting skies and capturing the light of a scene is one of the big goals that we have as painters. Today I'm going to walk you through my exact process of how I paint this sky. And once I show you these fundamental rules today, you can use this in any scene that you want to paint. I was really attracted to this scene because of the warmth in the sky in contrast with the coolness of the snow and shadow. I went ahead and created my drawing and I'm going to go ahead and wet the paper down front and the back like we normally do. And there's no area that I need to preserve or avoid getting wet. I'm just going to cover the whole paper. And as I normally do, I'm going to start off with a large mop brush. And we want to think about the brightest, warmest area of the light first. So what I'm going to start off with is some raw sienna and some quinacridone gold. The brightest part of the sky is going to be right here. Once I establish where the brightest part of the painting is, I know that everywhere else needs to be a stronger value. So I'm adding more and more paint and less water as I move away from this area. So I'm going to add more of the same, quinacridone gold, raw sienna. And I can go right over the ground. I don't need to worry about preserving anything or changing colors yet. And you'll notice I'm making the light large because what tends to happen is we chip away and chip away and the light gets smaller and smaller. So I'm kind of exaggerating that. And we'll just keep working our way away from the light and we want to keep getting stronger. I'm going to introduce some rose matter permanent. Raw sienna, rose matter permanent, quinacridone gold. And we just keep working our way away from this bright area. Getting stronger and stronger as we go. Now I want to rinse my brush off. I want to use some rose matter, permanent, and some lavender. A little bit of cerulean. We're starting to work our way into some of these cooler colors now, but we want to keep using this rose matter permanent as a nice transition color. When you are using warm and cool colors, where they meet and mix on the paper can sometimes create a green color. If you wish to avoid this, use a transition color such as Rose Matter Permanent or Alizarin Crimson. You need a lot of paint in order to get to the, these correct values. So don't shy away from using a lot of paint. Now be sure to add a variety of brush marks in your sky. You want to try and mix in some large, medium, and small marks. This will help your sky to appear more natural. And this is a good rule of thumb for painting in general. Okay. Continuing to move into other parts of the sky. And we are gonna transition into some more coolness, more cerulean, and we're gonna use some ultramarine blue as well. And we're adding more and more coolness as we get away from the warmth here. I want just a touch of warmth, maybe up here, just to continue that. So it's not all just completely blue up in the top of the sky. Now one thing I found out while painting skies is you reach a point where you stop focusing so much on your reference photo and you focus more on what is happening in your painting. So I'm not going to be able to copy every little nuance, every little change in value. It's more important to keep the sky fresh than accurate. I have to remember that my goal here is to really create an impression and not an exact copy of the sky. 
Now at this point, I'm ready to start painting the ground. When you move into this stage of your painting, you wanna make sure that your ground is a lot stronger in value than your sky is, because again, we wanna keep the light bright. You may even need to glaze over it once it dries to make the value strong enough. And here is a look at the final painting. Now you can take this method and this information and apply it to any scene that you would like to paint. If you are ready to take your next big step forward as a painter, I have a free video lesson for you. The seven secrets of fresh and powerful painting. Now in this video lesson, I talk about how to plan out your painting, how to mindfully paint your scene, and most importantly, how to know when to put your brush down and avoid overworking your painting. When you sign up for this lesson, I send you a pre-painting checklist so you can take these ideas and have a checklist to look at before you start each painting. I also include my watercolor supplies guide. So if you have questions about paper, about pigments or paints, anything like that, I answer all those questions in my watercolor supplies guide. So if you're ready to take your next big step forward as a painter, all you have to do is click right here and follow this link to my free video lesson. I'll see you there.